At the beginning of December 2025, Beijing introduced export measures that instantly disrupted the global chip supply chain. Under the new rules, any item connected to lithography that contains even a tenth of a percent of rare earth materials originating from China must now receive approval from Chinese authorities before being sent abroad, regardless of the place of manufacture or shipping route. In parallel, China imposed an additional licensing process specifically for technologies used in producing logic chips below the 14 nanometer level, as well as high-end memory, and the critical components used in these systems. Many analysts quickly interpreted these steps as a direct answer to pressure coming from the Netherlands, essentially threatening the backbone of Dutch lithography capabilities. This confrontation can be traced back to the end of September, when Dutch authorities unexpectedly intervened in the operations of Nexperia, a semiconductor company owned by China, without prior consultation. In a surprising legal move, the Amsterdam Court of Appeal dismissed the Chinese chief executive without a hearing, put a foreign caretaker in charge, and transferred the overwhelming majority of company shares into a trust controlled by a third party. The Dutch government justified the intervention by pointing to alleged management flaws and claimed that European economic security was at stake, although it offered no substantial evidence supporting those accusations. Nexperia had been purchased by China's WingTech for several billion dollars in 2019 and, over time, became an essential supplier of automotive-grade semiconductors used in electric vehicles, industrial controls, and various safety-critical technologies by well-known international manufacturers such as BYD. Siemens, and Bosch. The timing of the Dutch action closely aligned with ongoing American restrictions aimed at slowing the advance of China's semiconductor sector. The United States had already placed Wing Tech on its entity list in late 2024, and, shortly before the Dutch courts stepped in, Washington broadened those sanctions to cover subsidiaries where listed companies held more than half of the shares, immediately cutting Nexperia off from vital tools and technologies. China responded quickly by ordering Nexperia's facilities inside China, as well as their subcontractors, to halt exports of core automotive semiconductor products. The company's large packaging and testing plant located in Guangdong, responsible for discrete components, analog devices, logic chips, and power electronics, saw production utilization collapse from almost full capacity to single-digit levels. European delivery performance, once near perfect, fell to just a few percent. Even though Nexperia's official headquarters remained in the Netherlands, more than two-thirds of its essential manufacturing lines were based in Chinese cities, meaning that legal control in Europe translated into little practical authority over day-to-day -day operations. Employees in China were informed that instructions would come exclusively from the Chinese legal representative, essentially severing operational links with the Dutch side. The impact in Europe was felt without delay. Volkswagen's flagship factory in Wolfsburg suspended production suffering losses estimated at over $100 million per day. BMW in Munich encountered delivery delays for premium vehicles, which doubled waiting periods and triggered unprecedented declines in orders. Within a few weeks, the European automobile industry recorded several billion dollars in erased output, and tens of thousands of workers faced temporary layoffs. Europe's leading automotive association formally warned that a prolonged shortage of chips could inflict permanent damage on the continent's auto sector. American carmakers were also affected. Honda reduced output in North America and facilities in Canada cut their capacity in half. Industrial data showed that most major European manufacturers relied heavily on Nexperia's Chinese production lines, and roughly one-third of automotive supply chains considered Nexperia irreplaceable due to the long certification cycles required for automotive-grade electronics. By early November, Germany's main automotive lobby issued an ultimatum to the Dutch government, cautioning that if no solution appeared soon, several major EU members would activate emergency mechanisms under the EU CHIPS Act to place Nexperia's European factories under a collaborative European framework, effectively bypassing Dutch authority. Beijing's second major response zeroed in on the area where the Netherlands holds global leadership, lithography. China's updated rare earth rules created a threshold so low that nearly every advanced lithography system built anywhere in the world would require Chinese authorization. Moreover, every shipment connected to processes below 14 nanometers or advanced memory production would now be reviewed individually. Since China dominates rare earth refining worldwide, the Netherlands became especially vulnerable. ASML, the crown jewel of Dutch semiconductor engineering, 
depends heavily on rare earth products originating from China for its extreme precision optics, powerful motors, and magnetic levitation assemblies. These elements include materials like cerium, dysprosium, and terbium, for which viable substitutes are essentially non-existent at present. Attempts by ASML to reduce reliance on Chinese suppliers have repeatedly led to higher costs and worse performance. Southeast Asian refining capacity remains minimal, and U.S. operations, while expanding, produce purities far below the requirements for cutting-edge chip tools. ASML reportedly holds only a few weeks of rare earth inventory, meaning any substantial delay in permitting from China could reduce monthly output by dozens of machines and erase billions of dollars in yearly revenue. The underlying contradiction is impossible to miss. Europe's technology restrictions may place limits on China, yet countries like the Netherlands still rely deeply on Chinese raw materials used in the most advanced manufacturing. This essentially ensures that the long-term consequences are far more damaging for the Netherlands than for China. That raises a bigger question. Can China's dominance in rare earth elements compel Western governments to rethink their technological blockades? Or will it accelerate their scramble to build alternative supply systems? In early December, Beijing introduced a far-reaching export control rule that sent shockwaves through the global semiconductor sector. Under this new measure, any lithography-related component that includes even a fraction, 0.1% or more, of Chinese rare earth content must now receive an export approval from China, regardless of which country manufactures it or how it moves across international borders. On top of that, Beijing has activated a far stricter approval process for critical chip-making equipment, especially items associated with 14 nanometer logic chips and high-performance memory. The announcement immediately reverberated through the supply chain, and many analysts view it as a direct response to Dutch actions, aimed precisely at the industry that represents the Netherlands' greatest technological pride. So why has China turned its attention toward the Dutch? The answer leads back to late September, when Dutch authorities initiated what can only be described as a state-enforced takeover of the Chinese semiconductor firm Nexperia. Without prior dialogue, regulators removed the company's Chinese CEO and assigned management to a foreign trustee. The official reasoning was framed as economic security, yet authorities provided no evidence that Nexperia endangered Europe in any meaningful way. What actually happened is that Nexperia had been purchased by China's WingTech in 2019. And over the years, it had become crucial in global automotive semiconductor supply. Its components power everything from industrial systems to electric vehicles and are sold to some of the world's largest manufacturers. This Dutch intervention aligned closely with the United States, which placed WingTech on its entity list in 2024 and tightened restrictions again in 2025. Once those sanctions expanded to subsidiaries, Nexperia could no longer obtain essential equipment. It appears the Netherlands assumed that U.S. backing would make seizing Nexperia both safe and beneficial. Yet developments rapidly exposed how mistaken that assumption was. Within days of the Dutch move, Beijing prohibited Nexperia's Chinese factories from exporting automotive-grade semiconductors, instantly paralyzing the firm's supply network in Europe. Because the majority of Nexperia's manufacturing, testing, and packaging capacity exists inside China, the Dutch takeover ended up controlling little more than a legal shell. Factories in China explicitly announced they would respond only to Chinese legal authority, rendering the Dutch operation almost symbolic. The result for European industry was immediate and harsh. Major automakers abruptly cut production, losses mounted by the hundreds of millions, and waiting periods for premium vehicles doubled. Over 100 billion chips are shipped annually by Nexperia, and many vehicle safety systems depend specifically on its components. Replacing that supply can take many months due to long qualification requirements. European manufacturers openly warned that irreversible industrial harm could occur if shipments did not resume. Some EU nations even threatened emergency action to override Dutch authority and keep critical factories supplied. China then escalated a second time. This round aimed directly at the core of Dutch industrial strength, lithography machines produced by ASML. China happens to refine roughly 9 out of 10 rare earth materials available worldwide. And ASML relies heavily on these very resources for lenses, magnetic systems, and precision components. Without them, the production of advanced lithography machines becomes enormously difficult, if not impossible. Inventory levels at ASML are limited, and any approval delays could seriously cut output and revenue. In short, the Netherlands attempted to block China's technology access while depending on China for the exact elements required to support its own premier industry. 
an imbalance that ensures the Dutch will absorb deeper economic losses over time. Meanwhile, geopolitical tensions between Washington and Beijing continue to escalate. The United States has implemented tariffs that critics say are economically misguided, and now maritime trade has evolved into a new arena of confrontation. With nearly 80% of world commerce shipped across the ocean, new mutual fees on vessels are dramatically increasing costs and forcing ships to detour. China consolidated its shipbuilding sector into a massive state-backed entity, enabling staggering production capacity unmatched by the United States, whose share in global shipbuilding has nearly collapsed. When Washington imposed higher charges on Chinese vessels, China retaliated with even greater surcharges on American ships while protecting fleets constructed in its own shipyards. Within days, shipping routes began to shift away from American ports. Beneath all this lies a deeper struggle over who controls global trade routes, and the momentum increasingly seems to be moving in China's direction.